Welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. I'm Brother Vince and I'm an Army veteran. Today we will be talking about Texas Veteran Benefits Part 2. But before we get into that, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can find more content from Vet Talk on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Reddit for more content. And to all veterans who would love to share your stories or resources for veterans, and non-veterans who would love to share your resource for veterans, please feel free to contact me ASAP so we can schedule the meeting. Now that we got that out the way, let's get into this topic. So again, we're talking about the Texas State Benefits Part 2. And I want to give a special shout out to Dudes Port Vet because there was some information that I didn't put in the last video due to the fact that I was just really trying to give a generic, brief description of the different benefits that the state of Texas offer. I didn't put in-depth information in it because one of the things I learned from the analytics that I look at, people don't watch the videos always. So a lot of times I didn't want to make long drawn out videos to where I'm going step by step, detail for detail with everything. I only go over information in depth that people talk or ask me questions about. A lot of the other information I put out it's just generic, original, fresh from the press, bullet point for bullet point information because I don't want to do long, drawn-out videos knowing that people don't always watch them because it requires a lot of time and effort into each of those videos that I do that. And a lot of times if people aren't looking at them, then I'm not encouraged to just sit there and just read off a lot of stuff knowing that people are only going to watch my videos for five or ten minutes. Because I do value my time knowing that my heart is for veterans, but at the same time, I still value my time. So I won't apologize for not going in depth. What I would say is put the information in the description. Let me know what it is that I miss or I may need to put out there. And then I'll do like I'm doing now. I'll create a video to make sure that I go in depth with the impertinent information that I may have missed on the first video that I did. So now that we got that out the way, let's get into this topic. So as I show you on the screen, the first thing we're going to go over is the Texas Disabled Veteran and Surviving Spouse Exemption Frequently Asked Questions. So this right here is about the property tax. And I just really wanted to read it for those, again, who may need me to read it for them. Is the Disabled Veteran exemption the same as the disabled person exemption no the qualification for disabled veterans exemptions are different than those for disabled person exemption tax code section 11.22 applies to veterans of the united states armed forces with a service connected disability the veteran must be classified as disabled by the u.s veteran affair or the branch of service in which the veterans serve and be a Texas resident. Unlike the disabled person exemption, which only applies to resident homestead property, the disabled veteran exemption can be applied to any one property the disabled veteran owns. A disabled veteran may also qualify for a disabled person exemption. The surviving spouse, if unmarried, or surviving children if under 18 of a disabled veteran may also qualify to receive partial exemption. What is the amount of the disabled veteran exemption? The exemption amount depends on the veteran's disability rating from the United States Veterans Administration or the branch of armed service in which the veterans serve. So right here, you can see the chart giving you a brief description of what the value of the exemption is. So for veteran disabled veteran exemption on um, disability rating, 10 through 28 percent, the exemption amount up to five thousand for um, the property's value. For 30 to 49 percent, 7,500 from the property's value. For 50 to 69 percent, 10,000 from the property value. And for 70 to 100, 12,000 from the property value. A disabled veteran may also qualify for an exemption of 12,000 of the assessed value of the property if the veteran is age 65 or older with a disability rating of at least 10%, totally blind in one 
or both eye or has lost use of one or more limb. If my house was donated by a charitable organization, am I still eligible for the disabled veteran exemption? A disabled veteran with a disability rating of less than 100% may qualify for an exemption on their resident homestead donated by a charitable organization. The percentage amount of the exemption is equal to the disabled veteran's disability rating. The same percentage exemption extends to surviving spouses if the surviving spouse has not remarried. The property was the surviving spouse homestead when the disabled veteran died and the property remains his or her resident homestead. If my spouse died while serving in the United States military, do I qualify for an exemption? Tax code section 11.133 allows the surviving spouse of a member of the United States Armed Service killed or fatally injured in the line of duty to qualify for total property tax exemption on his or her resident homestead if the surviving spouse has not remarried since the death of the armed service member. A surviving spouse of a member of the United States Armed Services who died while on active duty may also qualify for a $5,000 exemption under tax code section 11.22. This exemption may be applied to any one property the surviving spouse owns. How do I qualify for the 100% disabled veteran residence homestead exemption? Our 100% disabled veteran and surviving spouse FAQ, which is question, um, website page contains everything you need to know about qualifying and applying for 100% disabled veteran and surviving spouse exemption provided under tax code section 11.131. So what I'll do after I've done the last two questions, I'll go back and I'll click on it so that we can see what those questions are all about. It said, what is the deadline to file an exemption? May I file after the deadline has passed? The deadline to apply for an exemption is April 30th. However, the tax code allows application for certain exemptions to be filed after the deadline has passed. Disabled veterans, including surviving spouses and children, applying for exemption under tax code section 11.22 have up to five years after the delinquency date of taxes on the property to submit their application. You can apply for this exemption by completing form 50-135 application for disabled veteran or survivors exemption and submit it to the appraisal district in which the property is located. Similar tax code section 11.132 allows disabled veterans whose resident homestead was donated by a charitable organization to apply for this exemption up to five years after the delinquency date for taxes on the property. A surviving spouse of a disabled veteran has two years after the delinquency date for the taxes on the property to apply for this exemption. You can apply for the exemption by completing form 50-114 residence homestead exemption application and submitting it to the appraisal district in which the property is located. May I use my Department of Public Safety personal identification certificate or driver's license for proof of my disability rating? No. While a driver license or personal identification certificate is required to apply for some exemptions, these forms of identification are not satisfactory proof of disability rating for property tax exemption purposes. So now we're going to go back and we're going to look at the 100% disabled veterans and surviving spouse FAQ. So right here, you can see this is the 100% disabled veteran and surviving spouse frequently asked questions. Texas Code Section 11.131 provides an exemption of the total appraisal value of the resident homestead of Texas veterans awarded 100% compensation from the United States Department of Veterans Affairs due to a 100% disability rating or determination of individual unemployment ability by the United States Department of Veterans Affairs. So the first question is, can these exemptions apply to all properties owned by a qualifying veteran? 
No, this exemption only applies to a disabled veteran residency homestead. Disabled veterans owning property other than a resident homestead may qualify for a different exemption under tax code 11.22, which can be applied to any property the disabled veteran own. Additional information on this qualification application deadline and how to apply for this disabled veteran exemption is available in the disabled veteran and surviving spouse FAQ. An eligible disabled veteran may receive both exemptions. In order to qualify for this exemption, do you have to be awarded a 100% disability rating and re awarded 100% service-connected disability compensation? Yes, a disabled veteran with a service-connected disability awarded 100% disability compensation and a disability rating of 100% or determined of individual unemployment ability is eligible for this exemption. To qualify for this exemption, does a veteran have to be both unemployable and have a service-connected disability rating of 100%? No, a disabled veteran with a service-connected disability awarded 100% disability compensation is eligible for the exemption if he or she is either 100% or is unemployable. What is the deadline to file for this exemption? May I file after the deadline has passed? The deadline for filing an exemption is April 30th. However, the tax code allows application for certain exemptions to be filed after the deadline has passed. To receive the 100% disabled veteran exemption, you may file for the exemption up to five years after the delinquency date for the taxes on the property. To file for this exemption, you may complete the application for residency homestead exemption form and submit it to the appraisal dictionary in which the property is located. If you become eligible for the 100% disabled veteran residency homestead exemption in the middle of a tax year, does the exemption apply for that entire tax year? A person who qualifies for an exemption after January 1st of a tax year may receive the exemption immediately on the qualification for the application portion of the tax year. If a 100% disabled veteran moves to a different residency homestead in the middle of a tax year, what happens to the exemption on a previous property? If an exemption applies to a residency homestead on January 1st ends during the year, taxes due on the homestead for the portion of the year after the date the exemption ends. If a 100% disabled veteran moves to a different residency homestead in the middle of a tax year, when does the exemption apply to the new residence homestead? The exemption may start immediately when a 100% disabled veteran qualifies the new residence homestead. The tax due for the tax year is the amount due for the portion of the year before the exemption started. Form 50 Dash 114 residency homestead application must be a file with the appraisal district in which the new residency homestead is located. Who qualify for the exemption for the surviving spouse of a 100% disabled veteran? A surviving spouse of a disabled veteran who qualifies for this exemption or who would have qualified for this exemption if it had been in effect at the time of the veteran's death is eligible if the surviving spouse has not remarried. The property was the surviving spouse residency homestead at the time of the veteran's death, and the property remains the surviving spouse residency homestead. Does a surviving spouse qualify for an exemption if he or she remarried? No, a surviving spouse does not qualify if a surviving spouse has remarried since the death of the disabled veteran. How much is the exemption? The total appraisal of the disabled veteran's residency homestead. If a surviving spouse qualifies for the exemption and then moves to a new residency homestead, can a surviving spouse get an exemption on the new residency homestead? A surviving spouse can receive an exemption on a subsequent resident homestead if he or she has not remarried since the death of the disabled veteran. However, the amount of the exemption is the dollar amount of the exemption for taxation of the former residency homestead. In the last year, the surviving spouse received the exemption. The new residency homestead may not receive a total property tax exemption. The last thing I'm going to go over is for the rates for the Texas veteran homes effective January 1st, 2023. So for those 
Texas residency homes that I talked about earlier, I'm going to show you what the prices are for each of those places that I named in my video, part one for Texas veteran benefits. So as you can see on my screen, they have it listed as far as each place where a home resides and they actually have the pricing that each veteran would pay due to their situation. So if you're a veteran who are in one of these situations, this is what the pricing will be for you. And I got it up on the screen so that you can see what it is. And I will also put this information in the description box so that you can see what those rates are or someplace you can start thinking about now. Because one of the things that I read in the comment section was most veterans don't prepare for this moment. Everybody prepares to live, but nobody prepares to die. And I understand sometimes that could be a touchy subject, but this is something for veterans or, you know, spouses of a veteran to think about because that time is going to come. And if you need to be in a home, you need to know what that home price will be so that you can be better prepared for that time. So I just really wanted to show this on my screen. But again, like I said, I will post this stuff inside of the description box so that you can actually, you know, click on it, read it for yourself, see what the information is talking about. And as always, man, I just want to put this disclaimer out there or this word of encouragement for you. If you have any information that you would like to share for veterans, please feel free to contact me by email. You can even put comments in the comment section and I'll be sure to reach out to you, get a hold of that information and do my due diligence. Because again, vet talk isn't about me sitting here as a veteran talking. It's about you. And if there are things that you need to understand, want to understand, need help with, then you know what I'm saying? Reach out to me. You got my email. You can reach out to me by email. You can reach out to me by commenting. I'm welcome and open to it. And I'll do my best to assist you with what I can help you with. I want to say that I don't know everything. I don't know the ins and outs and the inner workings of everything. And I'm okay with that. That's why I offer other veterans to come on the show. And you can, you know, talk about the content and the information that you know. And I'll gladly upload the video and we can do this thing together. But I also want to make sure that you note that because I'm a Christian on my show, I won't tolerate profanity. I won't tolerate people harassing people. I won't tolerate foolishness at all because I'm a man of principle and I stand by my principles, my beliefs. So there are certain things that I'm not going to allow. So if there are veterans out there that I see that want to do videos with me and I haven't gotten back to them, a lot of times it's because if I'm hearing some of the things coming out of their mouth on their channel, I don't want to be associated with certain things. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good character. And I like to protect my character, even though I've messed it up in the past. But moving forward, I would love to protect my character. So there are certain people and things that I don't want to be associated with. So I'm very careful of who and what or how I do things. So as always, this has been another episode with your boy, Brother Vince for Vet Talk. My good people, Vet Talk out.